China is such a dynamic market, as we learned from earlier sessions today um, in the conference, you see so much happening with the urbanization. So the, the guests are changing, the demand drivers that are in the locale of the hotel are also changing. At Harbor City, where we have three hotels, about 1,500 rooms, we have different hotels which have been there, the oldest, for more than 40 years. Recently, we took one of our hotels, the Gateway, with about 400 rooms and repositioned it. Over the last 30 years, Canton Road now has become a mecca for shopping, for luxury products. So now this hotel has been positioned to be more of a lifestyle hotel because the demand drivers have actually shifted. And Shanghai, of course, obviously is one of the favorite, uh, favorite city in, in China. And everybody come to China, come to Shanghai, this is must must visit place. So this is good opportunity advantage for Hotel Indigo like us. In order to see stronger consumption growth and a more consumer driven economy in China, Chinese people were going to have to earn higher wages. And then I think the difficult question for you, and in the service sector this can be quite hard, is are you able within your business to bring up productivity rates within the company, um, within the industry in which you operate, to offset the fact that wages are rising so quickly? And that is going to be a challenge for you in this industry, that you are going to experience wage growth of 10% a year or something like that, year after year after year. Well, I believe it's still growing yeah, very much in things, I mean, since China opened uh, over 30 years ago. I mean, even though we're talking about this area, and this hotel was open in before the Expo time. We had a Hotel Indigo, which is under the Intercontinental brand. We're the first boutique style hotel here. And uh, we just opened after the uh, Shanghai Expo. And when you're looking around, even in this area, within the five kilometers range, this, I, I think we're talking about top five star hotel, at least like 10 or 15, this kind of top brand. Uh, and it's still growing, it's still growing. Not all of the super wealthy in China became super wealthy through the kind of, sort of corrupt practices that perhaps you were alluding to. There are a lot of wealthy people in China who are wealthy because they're running very successful businesses. Um, and I think it's important to recognise that the dominant trend here is not one in which wealth and wealth generation is because of a corrupt nexus between the state and some very senior people in the sense of being private enterprise, but it's actually in large part a function of that that the economy here has been quite successful. We are quite recognised both by local market as well as international market and um, and we have 50% of customer come from uh, overseas, we're talking about all over the world, US, I mean Europe, I mean Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, and another 50% is, is local business. Uh, when you look at the China market history, it's a, it's, a, it's a big change. Before, it's Chinese customer maybe only have 10% when I started with my career, uh, hotel career, but now, and more and more um, um, Chinese start to traveling, and also when we're talking about corporate business, and more and more, I mean, the, the, the Chinese people are working in international company or even local company, then start traveling and staying in a hotel like us. So I think it's important to recognize that China is a tremendous opportunity for many Western firms, but Chinese firms' investments in other parts of the world will will destabilize at least some Western players in other markets. So I think it's important to know that China is not only a great opportunity for you coming in, but China's coming out and it's going to make life very hard for some companies in other parts of the world.